Robbie at tech-tut.com here, and we're going to work on an ADC with the PIC 16F690. The code has been up on tech-tut.com for a couple days, but it wasn't tested. Um, it, it worked fine. It, I downloaded it from my own website at home because I wrote this code somewhere else. It won't have this note here in black. It just says not tested yet. I'll take that down because it has been tested and this code does work. If you follow the schematic, if you have to build your own board, but if you use the Picket 2 board, the demo board that came with mine has the ADC hooked up to a pot already for prototyping. And it, This kit was sold with um, plans and instructions to do assembly. So yours may have came with it if you ha if this is what you have. Now mine has a lot of other stuff soldered on it. Soldered. Yeah, we won't get into that. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying. Um, this stuff was thrown in here later on for prototypes of stuff that I've thrown on here. Um, I've, I actually use the prototyping area. But we're using this ADC and I've got it set now in the program so that if this pot is turned to the halfway point the LED should light. Um, of course it's I don't know if it's a linear or log so it, it it's gonna probably happen in a different place now knowing where your ADC needs to be set for this particular application you might want to know what kind of pot you have I don't know what they used here it could be linear it could be log judging by where it stops at it's uh it's just not very calibrated. Um, I, I also haven't looked at what their schematic looks like. If I were going to do it, it would look like that. That would be my schematic equivalent of this ADC. But there you have it. When you turn the ADC, or turn the pot, the ADC reads the voltage on your voltage divider, because that's pretty much what you have going on here. That is really all this is. So here you go. We have an ADC. We're running it at 10 bits, and my pen would run out. 10 bits. So 2 to the 10 power is 1,024. So we have 1,024 points between ground and 5 volts, which is our reference voltage. And that's 1,023. And remember, 0 is pretty much like starting at 1, but 0 to 123 in our software. That's just how the bits roll. And we have 5 volts, so each step in our ADC reading is going to be divided by 1,023. And that gives us 4.888 millivolts. That's how many times I've tried to do this video that I've already memorized that, but... 4.88 millivolts, and any measurement that we make, today in our software that I've written, I did an ADC reading of 500 or above is what turns the LED on. So if it reads anything above 500, there you go. And to convert, 500 times 4.888 e to negative 3 comes out to 2.44. 4 volts, which is almost 2.5, I think. <laughs> but that's that's what we've got going on here. There's really not a whole lot to the actual schematic. The fun is in the program. Now, I've been using the same basis for the programs. I've just been adding and subtracting what we need. Today, in this particular one, there is a function to do the analog. It clears up main to do what main needs to do. And this one I called get analog. Today I used get underscore analog. Some days I'll use hump uh, camelback, but um, I think I'm going to start getting into using underscores. I kind of like the ease of being able to read it and then all lowercase. Um, and then using lowercase for variables and uppercase for um, things that are like defined or uh, constant. And in our main, we have a result integer, which is not the same as the result integer in get analog. You've got to remember the scope of 
um, your variables. And that's a whole other story altogether that we won't get into. But then we have a 4 megahertz oscillator. That's normal. I have tris A 0 equals 1, which makes RA0 an input. Analog select to begin with. For all the analogs, I have all of them turned off at the beginning. And then, of course, tris C and port C is set to all output. Now, in the main, I have while. That's my super loop. It just sits there and spins. I have a result equals get analog. So it'll go to the analog function that I've defined down here at the end. I declared it at the top, defined it after main. And it returns that reading that it gets from the analog to digital converter. If the result is less than or equal to 500, okay, so greater than, yeah, I said greater than 500. It meant greater than 500 earlier. Port C is off. Otherwise, or else, port C is, is turns on pin 5, which is where our LED is. There's not much to look at here. I'm sorry. This is Blurville. I need to really do some research and find some better way to, to show all this stuff. But the code in this file is at tech-tut.com, and you can download it any day, any night. It doesn't matter. You can have it. And then I have a delay of 200 milliseconds, and in my note, a delay to slow down the ADC measurements. Naturally, the ADC does need a small amount of delay between readings, but really, if you have a lot more code going on, the delay will be enough to give it a time to have a rest. And that's it. It just loops through that. In get analog, I set tris A equals 1, which basically, I said that earlier, it's still an input. But in analog select, ANSEL, I set it for a 1 for the 0 bit. And that is because now that makes RA0 analog 0. And then ADC um, configure, you'll have to configure those based on what I have there. I explain what everything means and then tells you how to do it. And I've got page numbers for where in the data sheet to, to do all this. And then it reads the result and sends that result to our main to do its work. And that's it. That's all there is to taking analog input. And you have to remember if you want to do digital on that same pin, you'll have to set the analog select back to zero or it'll still be set to analog. It will only, re if you try to do a digital reading from an analog pin, a digital reading, just reading the port, will always return zero. That's just that's just the way it is. Um, it's set in the data sheet, and it will cause problems if you don't know that. I speak from firsthand experience. That was the problem that I had um, with one with the input. It wouldn't take input. It kept returning zero, and then I found that in the data sheet, and I said, "Oh, that explains all that." There are a couple other chips I think that that's true with. You just have to be careful about it. That's why knowing the data sheets really helps out. In CCSC, it does it for you. In high tech, as I said in some of the earlier videos, it takes a little more thought to get a program going. But once you learn it, you'll know more about the chip than if you just go use CCS. Now, I'm not knocking CCS. I've enjoyed it for two and a half years, three years, but I want to do something new, something different. So it's high tech. And I'm sharing everything that I learned with everybody on the web that cares to find tech-tut.com. Now, again, I'm Robbie, and you can email me anytime, Robbie at tech-tut.com. I usually get back to you pretty quick because nobody ever emails me, except for uh, Frank emailed me once. And then we uh, pretty much talk a bunch now. He's helping me with the version 2 of this guy. And uh, a couple other folks have emailed me about the Black & Decker charger, which is one of my biggest, um, most visited places on tech-tut.com. 
Um, I'm done talking about the ADC now. I'm just kind of rambling on because, hey, that's what I'm good at. But there's a new one here. This is the newest Black & Decker story um, where I actually did a little reverse engineering and figured out what in the world is kind of going on here. Um, the Black & Decker charger was, was neat, but they had the part number sanded off for this, so it's kind of hard to figure out. I'm sure that if somebody really knew their chips, they could figure out what kind of uh, charger controller that is, but... That's uh, the the traces with the parts, kind of an x-ray view. And then, of course, a bill of materials on how to fix it. And anyways, that's that's I love electronics. This is what I do um, when I have free time. But there you go. There you have it. ADC. Piece of cake. The next stop is going to be interrupts. We'll do an interrupt on port A. Um, we'll do a change on pin interrupt. Um, and we'll get into that discussion in another video. But this is Robbie at tech-tut.com. Again, you can leave a comment. You can hit the like button. Uh, what is it these days? Thumbs up or thumbs down. It doesn't bother me. I like constructive criticism. Let me know what I can do different. Hey, I got a suggestion right now. I could find a better camera. But, unfortunately, here lately, or fortunately, I've been spending my money on ham radio equipment. And that's what I've been working on. All right. Y'all have a good day. Robbie at tech-tut.com.